<laughs> Hello everyone, how is everyone doing is Mesha Self here. Today, we are going to be reacting to Story Corps. I think that's how you pronounce it. Now, if you have never heard of Story Corps before, they are an organization that record real life stories from real life people and have them animated. Story Corps mission is to preserve and share humanity's stories in order to build connections between people and create a more just and compassionate world. What a brilliant, brilliant message and what a brilliant cause. Now they have some of these stories animated, okay? So today we are going to be reacting to their animations because some of them are so sad and so heartfelt, okay? And I've watched one of them, okay? I'm not going to tell you which one. I've watched one of them and I'm not going to lie, I actually cried and I think I'm going to cry in this video. So before we watch some Story Corps videos, I really want you to go and support Story Story Corps. I'm going to leave every single detail that you need down in the description down below. They're such an amazing organization, okay? And I would love to see more animations like this because I love, love, love these videos. Great cause. Please go in the description, show them support, donate. You can get involved so much. Just, just, just do it, okay? It's worth it. All right, the first animation we're going to be reacting to is called John and Joe. What could this mean? Okay, the story of John and Joe. Retired firefighter John Vigiano Sr had two sons, John and Joe. John Jr. was a firefighter like his father and Joe was a police detective. And the person talking in this video is John Vigiano Sr. Okay, so John and Joe's dad. There were a couple of days each year you were allowed to take your children to work. Uh, Joe loved it. That was his birthday present. And Aww. he would spend the night in the firehouse. Aww. We'd have a cake and the guys I work with they would take a milk container and they'd cut out the facsimile of a building and they'd put it on the top of the cake and then <laughs> they would light it up. Aww. And they would tell Joe to put it out and he would throw a pot of water on it. <laughs> the birthday cake was a little soggy, but this is what he wanted. Aww. Joe started dating a young lady whose Ooh. father was a police officer. And he came oh. home one day and he says, I'm taking a police test. Oh. This is Joe, you're only 17 years old. He says, ah, no big deal. On the okay. other side of the room, my son, John, Ooh. wanted to be the next Donald Trump. He was going to make a million. <laughs> yeah, not, not Donald Trump now. Probably Donald Trump back in the day. <laughs> wanted to be the next Donald Trump. He was going to make a million dollars and take care of his mother and father. Aww. But in 1984, I came down with throat cancer. <gasps> oh, no. He noticed then how my unit took care of us. Oh. And he says, I'm going to become a fireman. Oh. He says, you're kidding me. Fireman don't make millions of dollars. Oh. How am I going to live like a king? <laughs> But I was very happy, very oh. proud. He wanted to become a fireman just because he saw how his unit reacted when uh, he was diagnosed with throat cancer. That is so, so admirable. I was very happy, very proud. Oh, very My father happy. had been oh. on the fire department, and he was oh. the first one to be issued badge number 3436. Whoa. And they reissued it to my son, John. Oh. So the badge was only used by two. Oh, that's so cute. Both the boys uh, would call me when they were working. Okay. John would always call around 3.34 o'clock. Okay. And that particular night, September 10th, <gasps> we spoke for a few minutes. No. And I says, I love you. And he says, I love you. Joe called me in the morning and told me to turn on the television that a plane just hit the trade center. Oh my God, it's 9-11. I'm heading south on West Street. This is a big one. And I just said, be careful. I love you. I, said, I love you too. Oh my God. It. No, don't tell me. We don't. had the boys for John for 36 years, Joe for 34 years. Ironically, badge number 3436. Oh my. I don't have any could have, should have, or would have. I wouldn't have changed anything. <laughs> There's not many people that the last words they said to their son or daughter was, I love you. And the last words they heard was, I love you. So that makes me sleep at night. Oh, oh my, oh no, oh my God. He both, he lost both of his sons on 9-11. That, that, that must be the most heartbreaking thing I can ever I can ever imagine. As a father, that is the 
I can't even, oh my goodness, that is such a sad story. Oh my god, can you, Im I can't, I can't, I can't even imagine the pain. But also at the same point, I'd be so proud as a father, you know, to see my two children, you know, go out there in the big wide world and, and try and help people. Man, 9-11 was such a sad point in history, you know, so many innocent lives lost, you know, and you don't even think about the, the people that risked their lives on that day, you know, and people that, you know, were brutally Brutally mad. Man, that is very, very sad. That is that is one of the saddest stories I've ever heard. Okay, so this next animation was called She Was The One. And just by even looking at this, I know it's going to be sad because he's saying she was the one that... Okay, let's just watch it. I knew as soon as I looked at her that uh, she was the one. Aww. Uh, it was uh, magical. I can't describe it. I oh. couldn't tell her that, but I was like a 15-year-old again. Oh. I got a little Google-eyed and didn't know what to do or say, and oh. stumbling wasn't like me at all. Oh, he's in love. Wasn't the typical macho Italian guy from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> when I met Karen, somehow she relaxed me. Oh. She just taught me patience. I had very little patience. Basically, I was you know, one of those guys rolled down the window and screamed at the drivers <laughs> when they weren't driving the way I thought they should be. <laughs> and she toned me down. She oh. showed me to, to be nicer to people. To be Give nicer. it a second thought before you start yelling. Oh, that's and, so... and I've carried that with me. Oh. Other than her going to work, there wasn't a time we weren't together. Oh. Every morning, Karen would drive with me to my office. Yeah. And then she'd take the subway from my office one stop to the <gasps> Trade Center. I worked in Brooklyn. So my window across the East River, no, no, I no, can see no. the Twin Towers. No. So I'm doing some work, and one of my workers comes in and says, Richie, uh, I just heard that the Trade Center got hit with a plane. Oh, my I God. I turn around, and I see the building burning. No, and no, no, no. I took my office chair, and I threw it at my window. No. Then I brought the nurse up. She gives me a bottle of water. I have the bottle of water, and it's... I mean, it's in my hand, and my hand is trembling so much that it's splashing all over me. I couldn't even hold the bottle in my hand. I miss her eyes. Her eyes sparkled to me. One day they were blue, next day they were green, depending on how the light hit them. Karen, I'll always be in love with you, and I will see you again. Oh. I will do enough good to make it up there. Oh. Karen, Judy, oh. Wow, okay. <sighs> All right, that, that almost got me, kind of, kind of got me. Okay, so. He, he he lost the love of his life you know even just as sad jesus christ that's so so sad you know having someone that you love and care about so much just just, just being tra tra tragically like taken away like that and so abruptly you know one day you're like in love everything's perfect everything's amazing you know and then the next you know your whole world comes crashing down that's that's that must have been so hard for him. I can't. I cannot even imagine the pain he must have gone through. That is, whew, Jesus. Okay, uh, this next animation is called No More Questions. And by a thumbnail, it looks like it's from an old woman. All right, let's hope that this one isn't as sad. And not all of them are very sad, but um, yeah, like most of them are. Okay, so this animation is called No More Questions, baby. K Wang 87 had a reputation for being strong-willed. Okay, in 2008, her son Cheng and her granddaughter Shen brought her to the Story Corps booth in New York City. While Kay rushed through their questions, Chen and Cheng prodded her to tell her tell them a little bit more. Okay. I wasn't very nice. <laughs> if I make a mistake, my mother, she made me apologize. <laughs> in our custom, when you apologize to your mother, you have to bring a cup of tea and say, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I purposely dropped that hot cup of tea <laughs> in my mother's lap. <laughs> what a rebel. I wasn't a good student. Oh. I always lie to lie? get out of school oh. because a lot of boyfriend after me. <laughs> At that time I was too young. I was not bad looking then. Aww. Got a <laughs> so, cute story from Granny. Else? Hurry, hurry. I'm gonna go home. <laughs> How'd you meet Grandpa? I was a training nurse in a hospital. Whoa. He was there for hemorrhoids operation. Cool. <laughs> so 
When your grandpa see me, <laughs> your grandpa keep on asking me to get married, <laughs> and I say I don't like you. <laughs> you have bald head. <laughs> I didn't like him because he's ugly. <laughs> But one thing about your grandpa, he's very smart. Yeah, that's it. No oh, more questions. That's it. No more <laughs> questions. Your your grandpa's smart. Okay, he knows how to how to get, work his magic on the ladies. <laughs> no more question. Yeah. <laughs> Just a couple more questions. Short one. <laughs> Short ones. Short. <laughs> Tell me about working at Bloomingdale's. What did you yeah, do? Yeah, what did you do? You know what I do. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> no, you have to. You have to talk about it. <laughs> She's so funny. I am a detective. Ooh, a detective. <laughs> I got a very famous designer. I better not mention her name. <laughs> She stole a dress, three thousand some dollars. Whoa! So I walk out the store. Huh. I said, "Would you like to pay me that dress?" <laughs> She said, "Do you know who I am?" I said, yeah, you are a thief. <laughs> yeah, thief. So, that's my life. Oh, <laughs> that's so you cute. You have any regrets? Regrets? No, what should I regret? No, oh. I think I'm old enough to do whatever I would like. Oh, and that's it. Oh, <laughs> what a beautiful woman! What a beautiful woman! Kay passed away just a few weeks. No, you can't do that. You can't. You can't just show me such a happy and awesome woman and then tell me she's passed away a few weeks after this. You know, there's a line between independent and stubborn, and my mom crossed that a lot. Oh. She liked to complain about things, but she didn't really mind. Like she took care of Grandpa, and oh. she did a lot of that on her own. Oh, you knew because she complained about it. That <laughs> she would do it, even though she complained. Oh, yeah. I don't know how willing she would have been to do StoryCorps if she actually didn't know she had so little time left. Oh. It was kind of like one of her last gifts to us. Oh no! My mother was cremated, and the original plan was to put her in the same cremoral <laughs> next as my to Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> But she said, "You know, keep me at your place for a while." Oh. So uh, right now I have the ashes at home, and. Uh, I talk to my mom every now and then. I'll tell her good night or I miss you or something like that. So I'm kind of happy she's with me. Oh my god, that's so sad. That is, that's so sad. What an amazing woman, man. You you don't realize, you know, the lives that our parents and our grandparents have. You know, like right now, I feel like just. Ringing up my mum and telling her that I love her. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna ring my mum right now and tell her I love her. Hello. Hi. Did you call? Me? Yeah, I did. Uh, sorry to bother you, but I'm recording a video right now, and in the middle of it, I just wanted to tell you that I love you and I care a lot about you. <laughs> Sugar, don't say that. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll let you go then. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Okay, I'm gonna go now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> See you. Bye. Bye. All right, the next animation we're going to be watching is called The Nature of War. And I'm guessing this is a war story, okay? There's wars all around the world, okay? And there's so much conflict in the world, you know? And yeah, I can't imagine the sad, sad things that has happened. Okay, this story is called The Nature of of war okay in 2005 specialist justin klimburn deployed to iraq with the oklahoma army national guard while serving in baghdad justin befriended a group of neighborhood children in iraq okay and justin told his wife diane about two iraqi boys who made an lasting impression okay one day we saw this child walking through the compound his name was ali and he did not want to talk to us. As opposed to a lot of the other Iraqi kids that you encountered? Yes. Okay. He was very shy. All right. And the second or third time that I met him, he brought his best friend, Ahmed. Oh. And Ahmed was much more outgoing. Okay. Cool. And so Ali really opened up. Aww. And once I met these children, it oh. made every day 
something I looked forward to. Oh, that's so We would so play sweet. rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> we would kick around a soccer ball. Aww. We were about as close as people that don't speak the same language that can be. That is so beautiful, okay? Just because you don't know uh, these people and they don't speak the same language as you doesn't mean, you know, like, as a human to human, you know, there's that love and compassion, you know? I had never been really good with children. Oh. And this was the first time I felt like I loved someone who wasn't my family member. Oh. But one day, no, Ali no. showed up, and I could tell something wasn't right. No. He kept saying, Ahmed, Ahmed, boom. What? We learned that Ahmed and his mother went to the gas station, and a suicide bomber detonated. Ahmed's mother is dead. She died instantly. And Ahmed is in a hospital somewhere. And so other soldiers and I collected what cash we had and gave it to Ali and said, go take this to Ahmed's father. But later, I saw Ali walking up very slow and uh, no. he sat down on the curb next to my Humvee. He dug a hole in the ground with his fingers. He picked up a rock and put it in the hole. Oh my. And then he put the dirt back over it. And he just pointed to the ground and said, Ahmed. And I knew that Ahmed was dead. And so I sat on the curb with him, me and Desert Camouflage, carrying an M4 rifle. And him, just a North Baghdad kid, just sat there and cried. I don't know what came of him. Oh. That's the nature of war, I suppose. Oh my god. But whenever I see any footage from Baghdad, I'm always kind of looking around, wondering if he's in the frame. Oh, he doesn't even, he doesn't even know what happened to the other kid. Oh, poor, oh my god, poor Ahmed. Oh, that's so sad. That is so, so, so sad. Oh my god, okay, I know a lot of you guys are young children, okay? You have no idea how lucky you guys are. You know, there's so many deprived children out in this world, okay? Poor Ahmed, okay? He didn't choose to be born in that sort of environment, and no child should be, should be growing up in that kind of environment. And that is just so sad and terrifying. And, you know, we should be so grateful that we don't live in a world like that, you know? Like, we are so lucky. We are so lucky. Uh, Jesus, okay, man, that is that is so 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 sad. Okay, the next animation is called first squad third platoon I'm guessing this is another war story. Okay. I'm okay. Let's just listen to it Okay, first squad third platoon in August 2005 Lance Corporal Travis Williams and his squad were sent on a rescue mission to Iraq Okay, and of his entire 12 person team only trap only Travis made out alive. That morning, we loaded into the vehicle, and I get tapped on the shoulder. Okay. And I got told that I need to bounce up to the next vehicle. Right. I said, catch you guys on the flip side. And that was the last thing I ever said to him. Oh, no. Next thing I know, no, no, no. I just hear the loudest explosion. And I see that's my squad's vehicle that got hit. The bomb flipped it upside down it ripped it completely in half Jesus. and everything inside of it was just parts oh my and, god uh, you gotta wait for the chopper to come recover them oh. so the guys from the rest of our platoon had to go out there with blankets and cover up these body parts so dogs don't come and grab my friend's arm and have a meal oh my god that's horrible when i got back into our room for <gasps> the first time it was just a mess you know we had to spend the next couple days just packing all this shit up and mailing it home to their families. Mailing their letters that they hadn't mailed oh, and cleaning up the dishes that they hadn't cleaned up. And there's dirty laundry. It was all I had left of my friends. Wow. And uh, I knew when I got home that I would meet these guys' parents, no. their girlfriends and their brothers and sisters. And it's hard because I feel guilty for being the one guy left. Oh. But I also feel a responsibility. I better make sure that everybody knows yeah. who these guys were, what these guys did. Yeah. 
And, uh, you know, I am most proud of not blowing my head off by now. Oh, my God. That's, it's just a whole lot easier so if you're sad. dead. No, but don't say that. that shouldn't be your tribute to your dead friends. Yeah, no, it shouldn't. When they're looking down on you, mm-hmm. they don't want you to be living in the moment yeah. that killed them. Yeah, yeah. You made it. You got home. Yeah. You should honor honor their memory. Yeah, yeah. By living the life that they didn't get to live. Oh. Honor the life that they didn't get to live. He, everyone in his platoon. Squad leader, Justin Hoffman. Oh. Team leader, David Kruder. Team leader. Brett Whiteman, team leader Aaron Reed, Lance Corporal Eric Bernholtz, Lance Corporal Michael Cifuentes, Lance Corporal Edward August Schroeder, Lance Corporal Timothy Bell, every single one, Lance Corporal Grant Frazier, Lance Corporal Nicholas Bloom, Lance Corporal Christopher Dyer. Wow. In, that's awful. In, in the military in the U.S., you know, you, you, you're separated into these platoons, and your and your and your platoons are like your friendship groups, the people that you you know you hang out and talk to and be with on a on day to day basis. You know, it's just, you know you you meet you make friends, you know, and and you're with them like every single day, and then in a, and then and then one and then one day, you know, just by just by a quick oh hop in the next vehicle you know they're just gone it, it's awful but like this is the kind of stuff that like people every single day you know devote their lives to war because they're prepared for it you know and it's it's something that we should be like way more grateful for all right the next animation we're going to be watching is called the last viewing okay it's or already sounds very very sad okay but let's sh- let's see this story okay this is called the last viewing baby alan ho was a combat medic in the vietnam war continuing that legacy of service both his sons joined the military in january 2005 alan's oldest son uh, was killed in action in iraq later that year Alan visited Washington for Memorial Day ceremonies at the Vietnam Women's Memorial, and there he met Paula. Okay, so his son, uh, who fought in the Iraqi war, died a year ago. So he's at Memorial Day remembering his son. I thought it would be great to welcome these young trauma nurses with some special Hawaiian lei. Okay. And I saw this army uh, nurse come walking up the path. Okay. And I said, here, this is a special gift from me to you. Aww. And she put her head down so I could put the lay over her shoulder. She noticed the button that I was wearing on my chest. Oh, his son. she just put her finger on it. And she said, I know him. This nurse knows the son. I said, how do you know him? He was my son. And she said, I was the trauma nurse at the crash unit where he died. And she said, I will never forget that face. (laughs) Both of us kind of looked at each other and we started crying and oh. I gave her a big hug. But That's I could so sense sad. that something was bothering her and what? I thought she may have sensed that my family might have been disappointed at the fact that our son, his life could not have been saved. Oh. And I said, I want you to know that my son was a warrior. He absolutely recognized all of the risks that were involved. Yeah. She cried and she said that as the head trauma nurse, one of her tasks was to prepare his body for his men to have a last feeling. Oh. And she said that she tried to close his eyes, Oh! but as she went to press his lids together, they always would come open just a little bit. <laughs> and she said that had bothered her all this time. <laughs> okay. And I, I looked at her and I laughed. And she kind of <laughs> gave me this puzzled look. And she was like, I'm curious now, why are you laughing? And I said, My son would sleep with his eyes partially open. Oh! His men, when they were in combat, they were never certain what they could do when the lieutenant was sleeping (laughs) because they never knew if he was sleeping or he was just awake watching what they were doing. (laughs) And I said, the simple fact that you shared that story with me totally convinces me now that you were with my son at at the end. Now, I never have to wonder about those last final moments. Oh, that's so sad. 
Wow. He met the woman that was with his son before he passed on. That's 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 a beautiful, beautiful story. And what closure for the father, you know. Imagine being a parent and losing a child. You don't know what happened in that moment, you know. You don't even want to imagine it, you know. But knowing that, you know, that this woman, you know, was with him at that time, you know. That would, you know, give me, you know, I'm not a father, but, you know, that would give me some sort of, you know, closure and some peace about that. You know, what a, what a beautiful story. And and he met her through going <laughs> through uh, uh, a memo- to, um, at some place in Memorial Day. Like, what are the odds of meeting uh, that woman? Man, that's a, that's a beautiful, beautiful story. Now, the last animation we are going to be watching is called A Good man okay they have so many great great animations okay i'm not gonna watch them all i really want you guys to go on the channel and watch them all because every single one is a beautiful beautiful video okay but yeah let's finish off this video with a good man hopefully a good peaceful story all right a good man okay let's do this brian will moth is the oldest of eight children who grew up in a very strict household eventually all the siblings became estranged from their parents okay brian told his brother mike about the day their father discovered that brian was gay okay so it's a story about a guy coming out to his parents dad found a love letter from a guy in my box of things and he read this letter and lost it oh my god he took me for a ride and dropped me off <gasps> in the middle of the night with a five dollar bill no! that's sort of all i remember sleeping outside in the country that night oh and i really missed my brothers and sisters when i left home oh. i remember hearing that if you guys talked to me if i called the house that you'd get a beating <gasps> because dad didn't want you to catch gay oh and you guys believe that Granted, it was a fear-based belief. Of course, but, you know, it was still something I had to try to fix. That's so, so sad. So, as each of you guys moved out or got kicked out of the house. That's so wrong away, and that's so sad. Or ran away in your case. Okay. I would make an effort to try to contact you guys and be a big brother again. Oh, that's great. At first, you were really resistant. You didn't know anything about gay people. And it took a long time for our relationship to build. Oh, but after you started to accept it, every time you met another gay person, oh. <laughs> you would say, oh, you've got to meet my brother and hook me up with every guy that you thought was gay. That's, you know, it was, I always thought that was really that's sweet. That's sweet. The thought of that And is that's sweet. when we started coming back together, oh. you know, as brothers and sisters. Beautiful. Brian, Pam, Chris, Mike, Jude, Amy, Josh, and Luke Henry. What a big family. Now, Luke Henry, I didn't even know because he wasn't born until I was like 19 or 20. Whoa. And I hadn't seen him in ever. Whoa. And I got a call and the voice on the other end said... Uh, Brian, this is your little brother, Luke. He's never met or talked to this guy before. He was estranged from mom and dad. And he wanted to go to University of Dallas. Okay. So I took my savings and oh. I bought one one-way ticket and one round-trip ticket to Dallas. Oh. Now, mind you, this is a Catholic school and I'm the big gay brother. I'm <laughs> running around getting him set up for his dorm room. And we go through this whole weekend. And at the end, I gave Luke a hug and a kiss oh. and told him how much I loved him. And he started walking away. Oh. I was just watching after him like, wow, I really finally got to be a big brother. Oh, that's so and sweet. at that moment, he turned around and mouthed. I love you. Oh. It was the most beautiful moment I had ever experienced. And I called you from the hotel, sobbing. Do you remember this? Yeah. You brought eight siblings that were so far apart to be as close as we all became. Oh. I just want you to know how much you mean to me that you've loved me like this. And for that, I will be forever grateful. You're a good man. Oh, what? Well, thank you, What Mike. a good man. Oh. That... That's such a heartwarming story, okay? Even though, you know, the parents, you know, didn't understand, you know, like parents, you know, that they, they grew up in a completely different world than the world that we are growing up in, you know? And, you know, and, you know, that didn't keep him down. He, he still... Want, he still loved his family and still wanted his family to be united even even though, you know, he he was gay. You know, him being gay has nothing to do with the fact that they're still family and, you know, you should love and care for your family so much. And, you know, it took him being outcasted as the first child to then, you know, come back and, you know, reunite the family, you know. Man, what what a... 
What a beautiful story. What a good man, okay? <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to end the video there. Now, this was me reacting to Story Corps, okay? And now all of the credit goes to them. Please, please, please go down in the description. Support them, okay? Even watching the rest of their YouTube videos would really support them, okay? There's many, many ways where you can go and support them, okay? Go check out their websites. Go check out their other videos, okay? And watch them all. Give them support, you know? Go subscribe. Do everything you can to support this cause because... I love what they're doing, you know. It's a beautiful, beautiful, you know, uh, beautiful stories, you know, beautiful message they're trying to, you know, do and stuff. Anyway, I'm rambling right now. I, I, I love, I love this. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the very next video, man. Slater guys, love you. Bye-bye.